What's up viewers and subscribers? Welcome back to the channel, the DNA News TV, where you're to bring you the latest news and updates. But my people, I just want to take the time out to big up all the viewers and my subscribers who have continued supporting the movement. Big up and blessings. Yes, people, still on the clansman one and young child. But this one, my people, it hot. Well hot. Resident of a Jonestown Avenue has to work with the clansman gang. And the, the, the witness speak about uh, the escape route for the clansman gang members where they dig holes and things like that, my people. So stay tuned, my people. A resident of a Jonestown Avenue in Spanish Town, St. Ketchin, were forced to work alongside members of the Wandan gang fiction of the clansman gang. While the second witness was cross-examination by the attorney Vince Brown, who represents Dylan McLean, one of the 33 accused persons in the ongoing gang trial. According to the witness, the gang often gathered at a house in Jonestown Avenue area to plan and execute their criminal missions. Brown asked the former gangster turned witness whether the gang has been hidden from the police. The witness said there was no need for gangsters to hide as people in the community were working alongside the gang. They, the resident, had to. He maintained, adding that the gangsters were in the community hours before the double murder and arson attack in Fisheries. In his previous testimonies, the witness claimed that Brian had an unfinished recording studio, a house, a bar in Jonestown Avenue, which was the headquarters of the gang. During his cross-examination by Brown on Monday, the witness made further claims that alleged members of the gang, including Brian, often eluded the police by hiding in natural holes beyond an old house. He said there was a secret escape route from Johnson Avenue which was located behind McLean's house. They, the police, wouldn't know that escape route to go through the fence and enter Shelter Rock or Ball Ground to get to Fisher's, said the witness. Brown rejected claims that her client McLean was a um, and that the witness knew him. To make her claim, the attorney told the witness that McLean's name was not on the list of gang members that he gave to the police in his statement. While the witness admitted that McLean was not mentioned in the statement, he insisted that he knew McLean personally. In previous reasons why accused was not mentioned in his statement to the police, the witness said, he did not remember him, the accused, at the time of giving the statement. But Brown mentioned that the witness had no details to give to the police about her client involvement as he, the witness, had no knowledge of McLean. Some of people, this look spooky because a couple of them man here, the, the accused gang members, some of them are going to come off of the case you know? But me know who I got to think. That, are, that is my opinion still, my people, as far as I me see it. The witness countered by rubbishing the suggestion, reiterating that he knew the accused with whom he said he frequently shared company. But Brown accused the witness of making up stories, arguing that McLean was not among gangsters who carried out the killings in Fisheries. She said the witness statements had several other omissions, included his testimony where he alleged that McLean had illegal guns. The witness shot back by reminding the attorney that he had testified to witnessing McLean removing an inch of tech gun from a roof. Yes, my people, it getting heated and hot in a man. Brown inquired whether that information was not crucial to share in his statement to the police. The witness responded, I didn't put enough things in my statement, but I am telling the truth. End of it with Vince Brown, his client McLean, 
uh, the defendant has has been cross examination with the second witness. It's a heated conversation, my people. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel, my people. And blessings and respect. I'm out.